Up to this point, we've been really configuring some basic SharePoint services, getting the topology up and running. And in this lesson, we'll actually start to configure SharePoint so that it looks like SharePoint to end users. The first couple of steps in doing that is to create the web application and then the first site collection. So the site collection is, is really what the users are going to see. The web application is, uh, is some processes that run under that. So our web application is going to be set up with, with a host header. We definitely want to do that because we don't want our entire SharePoint environment to be addressed by the name of a specific server because eventually we'll have uh, multiple web front ends and they need to be behind a kind of a shared host header at, uh, at some point. And then on authentication, this is going to be a little bit different than what we might have done in SharePoint 2007 or 2010. We'll use NTLM authentication because uh, where claims to Windows will provide the delegation that we need with Kerberos even if we don't use Kerberos delegation in, in the web layer. And I would recommend not to use Kerberos in the web layer if you don't have to because it simplifies your configuration if you can just use NTLM. So that's what we're going to do. And we'll only use the web service account to do this specific task uh, and that uh, provides some security isolation. So if for any reason there's a compromise of the web service account or there's an injection attack that causes the web front ends to uh, do things that uh, that they're not supposed to do, at least they'll be running under a service account that doesn't really have much authority to, to do much outside of running those uh, those web apps themselves. And then, um, you know, again, just to, you know, that, that host header points at the web front ends, not at the application servers, and, and that, you know, that should be pretty pretty obvious, but just to reiterate that. Then after the web application is created, then we'll create a base site collection. Um, that will just be a, at the root folder. So so in a way, the web application and the, and the site collection kind of feel like the same thing. They're actually not. The, the web application is what handles the uh, routing and communication with the users. And then it sort of, it sort of passes its uh, requests onto the site collections. It just so happens the root site collection doesn't have a folder name, but it actually is a physically distinct object we need to create. And when we create that, um, I'm going to use the BI Center template because uh, it will set up a lot of the BI content types that I need automatically. And the farm topology, just to, as a reminder, uh, looks like this. So we will set up the uh, the web app, which is going to be the SharePoint.cur.local, and then that will point at uh, the SP Web One uh, someday. It might point at another another web front end, or, or maybe five or six of them. And then uh, within the farm, we'll create a, a root site collection that uh, that has kind of that same name. Okay, so that's the synopsis of what we're going to do. So in the next lesson, we'll actually go ahead and do it. So after this uh, video ends, just go to number two of creating the web application and site collection and uh, we'll step through this step through the process